Now that we're moving on to chemical formulas, reactions, equations, all that junk, we need to start getting clear on the definitions of chemical formulas. Uh, because you're going to hear a lot of different things thrown around, and this is a video that's going to be related to a previous video on the definitions of atoms, of compounds, uh, of all that stuff. And I just want to say, just like in the other video, the other video was a little confusing because many different compounds, so something like H2O is a binary compound, a polyatomic molecule, it's a compound, uh, it has elements in it, it has atoms in it. There's, It's a very confusing thing to figure out, okay, is this a uh, polyatomic molecules and a binary compound. It doesn't really matter. In the end, we just use these words to help us describe things. For chemical formulas, it's somewhat similar, similar, oh boy, somewhat similar, except uh, there's a couple that are important that have uh, a particular meaning that we do need to know, and I'll highlight those as we get to them. So the first thing first, what is a chemical formula? Well, a chemical formula basically, in some ways, is the recipe for putting together some kind of compound. It tells us how an element or a compound is put together. So this can be something as simple relatively as HE. That is a chemical formula. By the way, it's also an atom. It's also an element. It's also a monatomic molecule, right? So a lot of different names for this. But for our purposes, as written, when we write it with this, symbol, this symbolism of HE, um, which we get from the periodic table, then we're in the, in, the, in the language of chemistry in the realm of formulas. So we can have something like HE, we can have something like CH4, that's a formula. We can go as complex as C27, H460, and so on, right? You can get really complex, but these are all formulas because they're all kind of the recipe, or they tell us something about the composition of particular compounds of particular molecules. Now, the first definition under this umbrella is the elemental formula, and this isn't really used that much, it's just a little weird. Uh, as you might expect, it's things like He, um, F2, Na, and so on. And this also applies for certain molecules like P4, S8, 8-8, S8, that are elements that are polyatomic elements, but we don't really need to know this that much. What is important here is that an elemental formula is just a single element by itself, regardless of how it's written. The next kind is the ionic formula. And generally, these are between metals and nonmetals, or positive polyatomic ions and negative ions, or negative polyatomic ions. Uh, so examples here would be this. So NaCl would be example of the first. You've got a combination, as we'll see, of Na plus and Cl minus. And this is a little bit going ahead a little bit. We'll learn much more about this when we talk about bonding. Um, so that's an example of metals and nonmetals. You could also have something like uh, AlNO33. This is also would be a metal and a, and a nonmetal, sort of. This is a nonmetal polyatomic ion, but you get the point. Uh, example here would be something like NH4Cl, where NH4 is positive. Uh, there's no metals here, but this is still ionic due to the character of the bond. This will become much more clear when we go over bonding. But just for now, know that there's a certain thing called an ionic formula, which talks about the bonding between metals and nonmetals, or between things with charges. The next kind of formula to know is the molecular formula. Okay, And this is generally the formulas used to describe nonmetal and nonmetal compounds. And this will also become clearer when we talk about covalent bonding. Again, we haven't talked about bonding yet, but we will eventually. Nonmetal and nonmetal compounds. So an example would be something like NH3, H2O, um, C6H6, uh, even that big one up there, C27H46O. Uh, these are all, all contain nonmetals. It contains, as we'll find out, covalent bonding. And for that reason, we just talk about these as molecular formulas. Um, one other thing maybe is hopefully what was clear from the context, but this subscript tells us how many atoms of this particular element there are in this molecule. So this molecule of benzene, this is called, each molecule of benzene contains six carbons and six hydrogens. So we'll talk about that a lot more when we go over chemical formulas, I mean chemical equations and reactions, but just to mention that for now. One other thing, I mentioned this in the earlier video about uh, atoms, elements, all that junk, that definitions video. Uh, 
and I kind of glossed over this, but I do want to mention this because it is important, a binary compound. Now, a binary compound is any compound that contains two and only two elements. So an example would be NaCl. That is a binary compound. Um, uh, let me think of some others. Um, NO would be a binary con compound. CO. Also, H2O. Uh, FeCl2. They can have more than one atom, but they've got only one, two elements total. So a binary compound is made of two only elements. Right? Things like AR is not a binary compound. Um, Na... Uh, 2CO2, CO3, 2 is not binary because you've got one, two, three elements in it. Um, even though you've got two kind of pieces put together, it's not technically binary. Uh, this is distinguished, this is, can be distinguished from diatomic uh, molecules, where diatomic molecules generally are the Brinkelhoffs, B, R, 2, N2, Cl2, H2, O2, F2. Uh, generally, these are diatomic molecules, though in theory, any molecule with two atoms in it can be diatomic. So NaCl would technically be diatomic, but that's not usually, is usually, this is usually labeled as binary. But that's just to distinguish the difference between these two. Don't freak out about it. It's not that huge. You, if you're in some classes, you might need to know this as a definition and answer a couple questions about it. But if that's the case, just look for the thing with two elements in it. All right, so what have I done so far? I've done molecular formula. Okay. And I've done, okay, so the other one, this is the important one, one of the first ones that the name does matter, matter a lot, empirical formula, sorry. Now, let's take something like C6H6. Imagine for a second that you notice there's, for every one carbon, there's one hydrogen, right? There's six to six. If you reduce this to the, to the uh, lowest whole number ratio, you'd get something like CH, right? Let's take an example of N2O4. We reduce that, we would get NO2, right? Because there's one nitrogen for every two, um, for every two oxygens, right? So we can reduce it like this. Something like C2H6 would be CH3, okay? And what this this is your empirical formula. This just shows you the ratio between the elements of the compound. So here, it tells us that for every atom of carbon, we have an atom of hydrogen, right? Now, here's the thing about empirical formulas. These don't necessarily have to be real compounds. They can be. So something like NO2, this is a real compound, but this is also the empirical formula for this guy. So be careful you don't confuse the two. CH is not a real compound. You'll never see CH floating around by itself somewhere, but it is the empirical formula for this guy. So just be aware that there's a difference between this as NO2 as an empirical formula and NO2 as a molecular formula. Um, different compounds can have the same molecular formulas. So let's take an example. C2H6, C3H9, C4H12. All these guys have the empirical formula of CH3. Okay, so different molecular formulas can have the same empirical formula. Um, so keep that in mind as well. This is just a way, and we'll see why this matters when we do some math with it, but this is just a way of figuring out the ratios of the ingredients. Imagine this was like a cake you're baking, and you'd say, okay, there's one cup of carbon for every cup of hydrogen, right? You're talking about the ratios of the weights of something. Okay. Um, finally, the second one that's very important to know is the structural formula. This is going to be something like you would be you would recognize in chemistry, so like something like methane. This would show the actual way the atoms are connected in the compound. And also may show the shape if you draw a particular ways. Another example would be water, right? This shows not only the composition, um, but also shows the structure. So it's essentially a molecular formula with structure added in. And you can get really complex here. Um, something like benzene would look approximately like this. Uh, where you'd have bonds here and so on, right? You can have, you can sometimes see stick figure formulas where it's just every point connecting these lines is a carbon. And then you can add on, you know, other stuff to make it complex and blah, 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 blah. But basically a structural formula is the same as a molecular formula, but it shows the structure. You cannot have an, a structural formula for an empirical formula because it doesn't make sense. This is purely just a mathematical or a uh, weight empirical construction. It's not about anything real necessarily about the structure of the compound itself.
And as an incidentally, there are a lot of ways, a lot of styles, as you can see here, to write the structural formulas. Um, and we'll see other examples. Sometimes you'll see something like this, CH3, CH2, CH2, COOH, right? You can kind of see this. This is sort of a structural formula in that it shows, shows some of the connections. Uh, sometimes you'll see, for especially really simple compounds, you'll see something like this. So let's pretend this was oxygen and these were hydrogens. So H equals O. This would be water, right? Um, so that's another way. But the history of the kind of conventions here of how to draw these is actually kind of interesting. But for our purposes, we're going to focus mostly on this. You'll see this sometimes as well, and occasionally I'll do this just because it's just quicker and easier shorthand.